Hello everyone. Today I wanted to kind of talk about my workflow, my illustration workflow specifically in using Rhino, a, a traditionally CAD program um, used for kind of designing 3D objects, industrial design, and in some cases architecture. And what that workflow looks like for me between Rhino and Adobe Illustrator, which is what most people and the kind of industry uses. So first I want to just show you some of the work that I've done. Um, some of the stuff that I do in Rhino. So my Penguin series um, that shows up here on my site and in the blog quite often. Uh, BB-8 um, was what I'll use to kind of demo. But all of these were drawn in Rhino and then colored in in Illustrator. So in, in some ways I consider Illustrator to be my, my coloring book. Uh, this draft is another good example. How would you go about making this connection to you? Using um, kind of curves in, in Illustrator may take some time, but just using one command in Rhino, I could get something very similar. So feel free to take a look through this in the blog to get more in depth, but I'm going to jump into Rhino and show you guys what I'm talking about. You'll notice this is kind of a 3D environment. I'm not going to talk too much about how you use this tool. That may could become another video. But basically, you have a 3D environment that you can move around and whatnot. So what I decided to do to get that VB8, and here's the reference, kind of what we're trying to get to, is I started with creating a sphere. Um, and just that's as easy as typing sphere in. Sphere. And then just selecting a point on the canvas, giving it a radius or dragging. And you'll notice there is a sphere there, right? So I kind of made a sphere, guessed on the body size, and then went ahead and made these elements, kind of the side panels of BB-8's body, and made them just flat. And once those two pieces were done, that's where the kind of heavy lifting on Rhino came in. So once you had the sphere, I'm just going to duplicate this one for demo purposes, and we had this side panel component you're like trying to put this onto the sphere so in Rhino there's a command called project uh, which literally just imagine it takes every point along these curves and draws them into the sphere so what we'll do is go into front view and actually do this just type in project select this curve this is grouped that's why it's selecting all of them and then select the sphere. And you'll notice what's selected now are these projected objects. So these are kind of curved along the sphere. And from here I did this a couple more times to get kind of all the aspects and then rotated the sphere around to, to get the right look. You get something that looks like this. So this is what I had used to say, hey, this is kind of what the effect is that I'm going for, this could be quite cool. And it, you'll notice that obviously because it's on a 3D object, the uh, the way it appears on the sphere is what it would look like and we wouldn't have to manually distort each one of these lines um, in Illustrator, which may be quite complex. So from here I just took this object, let's say this is what I wanted, type in make 2D, it gives me a bunch of dialogues, I just leave it at the standard one and it'll give you kind of a flattened version of what you would see in that viewport. Um, and from here, you can just go ahead and like draw in the head, use some lines, trim these lines up, etc. Draw a circle, offset this, trim this for example, to get something like that, whatever. Um, and once kind of all that work was done, you end up with something like this. And from here, what I did was just export this, export selected, um, save that wherever you want. I have it prepped in Illustrator already. And you get kind of something like this. And from here, I guess the the question is, well, what do I do now since these are not necessarily all shapes? They're kind of lines. Um, well, I just use the Shape Builder tool. That's kind of what I like to use. 
there's obviously different ways to do it. You could do it with live paint, or you could um, spend a bit more time for some of these shapes and build them out in Rhino. But I tend to just do it the coloring here. So let's imagine we're trying to fill in one of these. Let's go into the shape builder, give it a random color, and just start building out each of these components. And those are all these components, and then you can start changing the colors, making sure they look appropriate to the right orange or whatnot. And basically kind of rinse and repeat that, and you end up with something like this, which then kind of gives you that sense of VB8 with all the correct morph morphings of the lines here and the shapes and the distortion that's correct according to a sphere, um, which is kind of quite a bit less work than doing it in Illustrator. So that's kind of a little quick walkthrough of how I use Rhino in Illustrator. So um, from here, you can kind of save this and, and do as you wish. And a bunch of the stuff that I post ends up going to my site or dribble if you want to see some of that work. Thanks for watching guys. Let me know what you think in the comments below and if you want to see anything more or more in depth about Rhino and my workflow with Illustrator or just tutorials on either one of those programs, let me know. Thanks.